Let me address something which is, I guess, common uh, with this audience and it will be common for our viewers who will be watching the show later. The fear of attachment and the fear what of... What are you attached to? I'm microphone. attached to my family, I'm attached to a lot of things, material things in life <laughs> and emotional things in life. How does one, one detach some of their worldly attachments, especially material attachments? <laughs> if you want to detach from the world, everything material, including your body, you, sh you should jump into the ocean, you're on the coast. <laughs> this entire nonsense is going on for too long, let me put this to end. If you want to be detached, the most… you must do it efficiently, isn't it? Two meters of rope can do it. <laughs> you don't need a philosophy, <laughs> you don't need all kinds of teachings. You want to detach yourself from life, two meters of rope can do it for you. I'm asking you, are you here to experience life or to avoid life? Hmm? That's a question. Yeah. Are you here to experience life or… So, what is… what is the best way to experience life? You know… No, no, this is answer the question <laughs> You want to experience life or avoid life? To experience life. Tell me, can you experience anything, anything from the simplest thing to the most complex things? Can you experience the food that you eat if you're not involved in that process of eating? Can you experience the people around you if you're not involved? Can you experience the work that you're doing? Can you experience anything in your life unless there is involvement? Where there is no involvement, there is no experience of anything. The more profound your involvement, the more profound your experience of life. So, why do you want to detach? What your problem is, is entanglement. Whatever you touch, touch you're getting stuck to it. Can you keep the microphone down? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, just checking if you… <laughs> if it's stuck to you <laughs> Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm it attached because I'm a professional anchor, so that's the attachment I'm referring to. <laughs> no, the problem is just this, we are getting entangled. Wherever you involve, you're getting entangled. Why this entanglement is happening is because your involvement is selective or discriminatory. Try this and see in your life. When you walk out from here or right here, see if you can look around all these people. Some of them you know, many of them you do not know. Just see if you can look at every face with the same sense of involvement. The air that you breathe, the land that you walk upon, people around you, just everything. Show the highest level of involvement that you can manage. Whatever your level of involvement is, just the same level of involvement with everything. You will see involvement is a fantastic thing and there will be no entanglement. Now I am willing to involve with this person, not involved with this person. Now you will get tangled up. So because you are getting tangled up, you come up with a life negative philosophy of detachment. Detachment will never happen. Those who are trying to detach will get more and more entangled because this is the nature of your mind. Shall we do an experiment with you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to move to the next no, part. Shall we do an experiment <laughs> with you? <laughs> he's… he's being very detached with me <laughs> Shall we do an experiment with you? No, I mean we can always do it. Okay. <laughs> right now, next ten seconds, you should not think of monkeys. Don't think about monkeys. Only monkeys, isn't it? So, you have a mind like this. If you say, I don't want something, only that will happen. In this mind, you say, I don't want to be attached, you finished. Unfortunately, they're blaming Krishna for this detachment nonsense. <laughs> don't listen to the words that are written in a book, we don't know who wrote it. Look at his life, his involvement, involvement, involvement in everything, isn't it? Where is detachment in his life? He's absolutely involved, indiscriminate involvement, so there is no entanglement. Uh, you know, 
one of the aspects which all of us want to understand is there is a necessity in life there is abundance in life and there is greed in life necessity is important because i have compulsions abundance is something i thrive to have greed is something i don't want how do i define the necessity in my life uh what you want is always a necessity what somebody wants is greed <laughs> So let's not uh, get into this kind of descriptions of any human being. The thing is just this, the nature of the individual human being is like this. Wherever you are, you want to be something more. Yes, is it true for everyone? Wherever you are, you want to be something more. If that something more happens, what? Something more. If that something more happens, what? Something more. So you seem to be going in installments towards something. What is that something? Suppose I make you the king or queen of this planet, are you settled? Don't look at me hopefully, I won't make such a blunder. <laughs> if I make you the king or queen of this planet, will you be fulfilled? No, you will look at the stars. This is the nature of the human being. It doesn't matter what nonsensical teachings you give them, you cannot stop it within this, even in a single human being. These kind of teachings, be content, be happy with what you have, has not worked for a single human being on this planet. It will only work either when you are sick or you become too old for anything. Just <laughs> suppose today you are down, very ill, you will say, oh, what I have is enough, I don't need anything more. Tomorrow morning you're feeling a little better, hmm, again ready? <laughs> yes or no? So the nature, the very nature of being human is this, that you always want to be something more. How much more will settle you for good? If you look at this, you will see that it's not more, you want all. What you're looking for is an infinite expansion. If you try to achieve infinite expansion through material means, you will become an endless run. It's like trying to count one, two, three, four, five and one day you believe that you will say this is infinity. No such thing will happen, you will just become endless counting. Your longing to expand limitlessly is fantastic. The means that you're employing is very miserable because through physical means, you're trying to get to a, a limitless or an infinite state. The very basis or the very fundamentals of physical existence is a defined boundary. Where there is no boundary, there cannot be physical. We call this a physical body because there is a boundary line. If I remove all the boundary lines of this body, can this be a physical body? Nothing physical can exist without boundaries, but there is something within you longing to touch a dimension beyond boundaries. Your longing is fantastic, the methodology is a hopeless methodology. Now, this is not about greed, this is not about conquest, this is essentially a longing to expand because a human being cannot will live within the limitations of physical boundaries. We want to expand to a limitless state. If this has to happen, the only way you can be successful is you transcend your physical nature in some way. If your experience of life touches a dimension beyond physicality, only then this will happen. If your experience of life touches a dimension beyond physical nature, then we use this most corrupted word called spirituality. Spirituality does not mean looking up or looking down. It simply means your experience of life has touched a dimension beyond your physical nature. What is the significance of such a thing? Why should I do this? It is simply this, everything physical about you is acquired. What you call as my body is something that you slowly acquire over a period of time. What you call as my mind also is physical, the content of the body and the content of the mind you gathered from outside.
through impressions and food that you consume. So what you have gathered at the most can be yours, can never ever be you. The dimension beyond this physical nature is what you are experiencing as myself, but you are not experiencing largely what's happening in most human beings ninety-nine percent of the time is just physical and psychological drama. Thought and emotion occupies ninety-nine percent of your existence, isn't it? There is no experience of life as such. Everything is just psychological drama. In this psychological drama, you have pleasant dramas, unpleasant dramas, horror stories, everything happening. But it is all made by you, unfortunately not consciously made, made in compulsive reaction to situations in which you exist.